Before we get started, the background footage is from the game I made in under 16 hours. I've put a link to the game in the description so you can play it if you want. The source code is available as well. So let's jump into things. When I say the game was made in under 16 hours, I'm talking about development time and not the time frame it was made in. So I put in 16 hours into making this game. In terms of how long it actually took to make the game, as in how many days it was from start to finish, it was 48 hours. It was for a game jam, which if you don't know what those are, usually you make a game in a short period of time with a theme or something like that. In my case, it was made for the 11th Alka Jam, which usually has about 40 to 80 participants. In this particular jam, the theme was Ancient Ruins. Personally, I really didn't want this theme, since it was mostly just an aesthetic rather than a mechanical theme. That wasn't a huge deal, though. It's also worth noting that this game jam is one of the game jams that requires you to make all of your own assets with only a few exceptions. Some of these exceptions are sound samples for music, fonts, etc. So I had to make the music, artwork, sound effects, code, and everything for the game within that short time frame of 48 hours. I've participated in over 20 game jams now. I only go try hard mode sometimes, and this was one of those few times where I've done that. So here were the conditions for the jam. The jam was 48 hours from Friday at 2pm EST until Sunday at 2pm EST. I planned on streaming the whole thing, which I did, there's a link in the description for that. There's a lot of footage. <laughs> Unfortunately, I had to miss the first 8 hours of the event because of work and other activities. The game jam was meant for European time zones, and since I'm on the east coast of the US, it starts while I'm at work. I also always miss Sunday mornings for church. I'm used to budgeting for that part. I've dealt with it in pretty much every game jam of the 20. Typically I save sound effects and music for Sunday since I usually only have about 2-3 to three hours then, at least in this game jam since it ends in the early afternoon for me. And the time the jam ends actually varies by daylight savings because the jam start and end time is relative to UTC which does not have daylight savings. So when we have daylight savings here on the east coast it moves the start and end time to either 2pm or 3pm. As a rule of thumb I always implement sound effects and music lasts since there's nothing that depends on them. This time Sunday's scheduling was no different than normal, but I didn't have the majority of Friday like I normally did. Also I had some other responsibilities to attend to on Saturday, those being cooking for family. All of this together brought me down to about 16 hours of development time excluding breaks. Funny enough, I've never failed a game jam by being unable to finish. Because of this, I tend to push myself even further every time I try hard. I can't really go too far into the details of how I get my game ideas since they just kind of pop up in my head, but the base idea was to make a platformer bullet hell mix, which I've done several times in the past, but I wanted the bullet hell part to be normal four directional movement without gravity which I hadn't really done before. This concept led to me testing out a bunch of concepts in my head and I ended up with the following idea. You are a knight in some ancient ruins trying to survive. The levels are cycle based with scripted patterns for intense parts with lots of projectiles. You can release your soul to freely travel around without gravity as long as you're near and your body. The soul has a smaller hitbox and slower movement as well, which makes it easy to dodge projectiles. To be able to release your soul you need to use mana, which can be found in the levels. Mana can only be collected when your soul is in your body, so you would need to keep moving across the map to collect mana so you can survive the intense phases. I also scripted the ending of the soul release ability to be tied to the scripted events, which was arguably a questionable design decision. But all of this together led to a good mix of platforming and normal four directional movement. Anyways, the plan was to have a tutorial level, two normal levels, and two boss fights. Due to time constraints I decided Saturday evening that I reduce it to the tutorial level, one normal level, and the boss fight. On to the actual development part. Personally I like to start with the artwork for the game. I have two main reasons for doing this. First, temporary assets or visuals in general do take time to make or code the rendering for. 
If you have your assets available immediately, it saves time. Second, drawing out a basic visual for the game helps me build a mental visual for the game. Having a clear idea of what I'm doing really helps me stay focused. The artwork starts with one simple thing, pick a palette for the game. This was fairly easy. I just pulled one off of lowspec.com and then tweaked it to my needs, in my case adding just red. Normally I'll either make my own palette or use an existing one that someone else made and change things as I need them. I figured the blues would look great for a game that had to be themed around ancient runes. Next up was to actually draw the assets. Normally I just draw assets necessary to have something functional. In this case I need a player and a tile set to have something functional. Sometimes I'll change my mind on the direction of a game slightly as I get a feel for things, but for some assets you know that random decisions won't really affect whether or not they're needed. This is why I went ahead and drew things like the decorations as well. Other things like the projectile images were things I waited on until I actually got to that part of the development. The final initial artwork step was to throw together some of the tiles into a basic scene so I can get a visual idea of what things would look like. With the art done, I needed to make another asset for basic gameplay, which was a simple level. I opened up my custom level editor and threw together something basic. At this point it's worth mentioning that I have a lot of framework-like scripts that are interchangeable, so I grabbed some scripts that could interpret and render the level data and got things going. I now had a base for the game which looked like this. The next step was to get the player into the game. As with all things, I avoided using temporary assets. So I knocked out the player animation first. I already had at least 10 versions of scripts for dealing with basic entities. So I grabbed one and threw it in. This is where most of the pre-built stuff ends, though the rest of the game needed to be written mostly from the ground up. After adding the player, I added a camera that followed the player, and with that I had a working platformer three hours into the jam. This was where I did something rather abnormal though. In the past I made a video about how polish is more important than content, and I was sticking to that by doing polish first. If the project has to be cut back to fit time constraints later on, this results in the content getting cut rather than polish. However, I didn't just do polish early on. I did polish before the game mechanics. There really isn't any good logical reason to do this, but I wanted lots of shiny visual effects in my game and I like shiny things so I made the shiny things first. The only legitimate argument for doing this is that polish helps keep you motivated, which probably was the case here even if it wasn't my direct reasoning for doing it. I added some glowing to the torches and a ton of individual glowing particles, both of which had glowing visuals tied to sine waves. The sine waves are a major pattern in this game that you'll see in a bit. Anyways, with that, the game looked about 10 times better. At this point, it was past 2am on Saturday morning, so I decided I was going to end it there for day one. This was also when I made my 4 hours in post on the Alcajam website. Funny enough, one of my classmates ran into my stream on YouTube and recognized me. We ended up talking after I ended the stream, which cost me about an hour, so even though I ended the stream at 2, I fell asleep a bit after 3 a.m. Normally I try to get a full night's sleep for the first night of Game Jam since I think it's necessary to be efficient during the day, but I woke up a bit after 9 a.m. and couldn't fall back asleep, so I went on a two mile walk, ate some food, and got back to work. It was 11 a.m. by the time I started the stream back up. Even though it was a new day, I wasn't done polishing. I added some fog, which I hooked up to multiple sine waves for some smooth motion. I added some projectiles with some glowing effects next. If you're familiar with my games, you know I've implemented projectiles several times before, so I coded it up pretty quickly. I also coded up some sparks with more trigonometry and added a particle slash spark explosion for player death. Did he implement dying? Yes, there is dying. Here, look. That's this. <laughs> With all these visual effects done, I made my 5.5 hours in post on the Alcajam website. With projectiles and a working base platformer, it was time to start working on the gameplay that would actually be in the game. First I made the tutorial level, and then I added the base text that showed you the controls. Around this time, I think I set a new record of 186 people watching the stream live, so thank you if you were there. 
Unfortunately, YouTube did a stupid and randomly ended my stream before I could reach 200 viewers, so I had to start a new one under a different URL and I lost all of those viewers. The middle tutorial level requires you to use the main soul release game mechanic to slip between a wall of projectiles, so I ended up adding that mechanic while I was working on the tutorial level. I also added a few other mechanics while I was at it, those being thought bubbles from the player's character and mana. Much like the other visuals in this game, the mana visuals were hooked up to sine waves to create a smooth but odd looking blob. At this point it was 4pm on Saturday and I had spent a little over 8 hours on development. It was a fortunately time to break point since I had to start cooking for family. I was able to get back to work a bit after 7pm on Saturday. The level transitions and doorways were the final core system of the game which I implemented next. The doorways actually use the same visual effect as the mana. It's just smaller and red and I put it on top of the doors themselves. For some reason I decided to base my doors off of the doors from Kirby games. I don't know why, that just kind of popped in my head. It's things like this that help me save time in game jams. While the background and foreground fog are very different visually, they use the same underlying system that I just copy pasted and changed a few things for. Many of the visual effects use the same sparks and particles. And there's also the doorway and mana thing I just mentioned as well. Reusing stuff in slightly different ways is extremely helpful when it comes to managing your time. Speaking of copy pasting, the code for this game was an absolute mess. When you're working on projects like this, it's not a bad idea to use things that are considered bad coding practice, such as global variables and copy pasting code with slight modifications to get the job done as fast as possible. Since it was 8.30pm on Saturday with only the remainder of the night to work on non sound effects and music stuff, and since I had only finished the core mechanics visuals and the tutorial level, I decided to cut the extra level in the extra boss fight at this point. Levels for this game take a fair amount of work since the phases and projectile patterns were manually scripted. There's not a whole lot of interesting stuff that happened after this point. I made levels and scripted projectile spawning into phases. I also play tested quite a bit to tweak difficulty and adjust the visuals. I tend to have an issue with making extremely difficult game jam games which get me marked down quite a bit usually. Obviously since this game is a bullet hell it's going to be very difficult but I tried to tone it down a little bit. However the final level did have the boss so that's something interesting I had to add. Originally I drew the boss and planned on just animating it but I ended up taking a break for a nap and food after drawing the boss. Yes, I napped at 10 p.m. As you'd expect from taking a nap, I changed my mind about the boss and decided to make it more dynamic by rendering it with math and shapes. I set it up so that it would blink and look at you and stuff like that. Funny enough, I accidentally left the original boss assets in the game files even though I didn't even use them. Anyways, the boss has five different phases with different attack patterns. The first pattern is just a shotgun style blast of projectiles directed at the player. In the second phase, it shoots out a bunch of rings of projectiles that make up concentric circles. And for the third phase, it shoots out a single spiral pattern which I believe is fairly common in bullet hells. For the fourth phase, I did the same thing but I used a double spiral instead with the two spirals going in opposite directions so the spirals would make a crisscross pattern. I'm pretty sure this is fairly common in bullet hells as well. For the fifth and final phase, I made it so it shoots out three thick rotating beams of projectiles that you can't slip between. To beat this one, you have to get close to the boss in order to move around it in a circle. This is convenient since it leaves the player in a spot where they can see the boss explode at the end. With the boss fight done, the only part left was to add the ending scene. I made a circular room and added a text overlay that said thanks for playing. And finally, at almost 3am and after 14 or so hours of development, I was done with everything except the sound and music. So I ended the stream and went to bed. I got back to work at around noon on Sunday. I threw together some sound effects in a couple minutes using a tool that many game jammers use called SFXR. You pretty much just keep clicking buttons until you hear a sound that sounds good and if you know what you're doing can tweak it a bit to your liking. I hooked up the sound effects to my game and got started with the music. I actually didn't stream any of my development on Sunday, well it was only audio type stuff anyways, but I didn't stream it because having people watching me make music kind of stresses me out. You can see me make music in some of my time lapses for 
my other game jam entries, but streaming it is kind of a no-no for me. For anyone who may be wondering, I use LMMS to make my music, which is pretty much the best DAW you can get for free. I threw together a basic track consisting of a simple drum pattern, a bass, a synth, and an old outdoors ambience audio sample that I slowed down to give the track an eerie vibe. I wanted a separate track for the boss fight as well, but I didn't have very much time, so I threw in an extra beat for the drums and added a stutter to the bass and synth, which worked out okay-ish. After I added the music to the game, I was finally done. It was nearly 2pm, which was the end of the jam. I just packaged things up and submitted it. Unfortunately, I couldn't eat lunch yet or go to sleep, since I still needed to handle promotional stuff. I cleaned up the itch.io page and made a few posts. And by then, it was around 3.30pm and I was finally done. I ate and went to sleep. As of writing the script, the jam ended about 32 hours ago, and this has been the best game jam game launch I've ever had. I'm sitting at about 420 downloads from 32 hours, which is amazing. The feedback is very positive as well. It's definitely my favorite game jam game I've made so far. I'm pretty sure I'll get at least one medal, and I'm hoping to get gold in graphics again. I also somehow managed to receive five Reddit awards on my promotional posts which was kind of funny. And even though I lost a decent amount of time to answering questions and interacting with the chat while I was streaming the development, it was a lot of fun and I'll probably do it again for my next game jam. The next jam I participate in should either be the Ludum Dare 48 on April 23rd through 26th, or the 11th Awaka Jam on June 25th through 27th. Please subscribe if you're interested in seeing me go at it again, and uh, hopefully I'll see you guys in the next video.